Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. This week's word is Lenten. <laughs> Lenten. You might say, what kind of word is Lenten? But before you go to your dictionary, <laughs> I'll admit, it's a word that I've kind of made up. But maybe it'll catch on. <laughs> the idea is as we enter into these 40 days of Lent, and the word Lent means springtime, I thought I might transform that noun, Lent, into a kind of participle, that, a kind of action or a, a gerund for those who love grammar that gives that sense of motion or direction to what we do. Because these 40 days are not simply to be passively endured, as if we're white knuckling it and saying, okay, Lord, help me to not eat sweets or whatever we might do penitentially for Lent. Help me to just get through it so I can go back to our regularly scheduled programming and the way we live 40 days from now. The idea of Lenting is that we engage fully and are active in participating in the renewal of mind and heart that the Holy Spirit wants to achieve in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. So Lenting. What is it? It's the action of doing a little spring cleaning, of, of bringing spring into our souls. That's what Lenten is all about. Now, three verbs that might go with that are what do we do? Well, we fast, we pray, and we give. Those threefold, uh, the sense of fasting, of giving up things, of praying, and of almsgiving or giving. So, Fast, pray, and give. That's how we Lent. And just to reflect on each for a moment. First of all, fasting. When you think of Lent, you think of giving stuff up, don't we? <laughs> of letting go of things in our lives. And as good as perhaps uh, giving up foods or giving up a certain um, other things that we find to be attractive in our lives, here's some perhaps things you might not have thought about giving up. First of all, what would it look like to give up gossiping. <laughs> that way in which we can talk about others behind their back or perhaps build ourselves up by tearing someone else down in our words, our actions, our speech. What if we just give up gossiping? Or again, what if we limit uh, our screen time? We all have those screens, we all have those things that we interact in for good purpose, more or less. But how often do we find ourselves just kind of wasting time, <laughs> killing time by just being on our screen, time that could be better spent elsewhere if we were a little more intentional. So giving up recreational screen time for something better. Or perhaps another example, giving up, this is a tough one, <laughs> complaining. <laughs> How easy it is to come into a situation and see the negative, <laughs> see what's wrong, to be a master of critique. What would it look like if you said, every time I complain, I'm going to catch myself and I'm going to do something that builds up the situation, that brings the Lord's love and that sense of kindness, generosity, the gifts of the Spirit into the situation, rather than just simply taking away from that moment. So, fasting, certainly there's the traditional sense of giving up foodstuffs at a different time, but what about giving up that sense of gossip? giving up a little screen time, giving up complaining. Then prayer. Prayer is the heartbeat of, those, of the three actions of Lenten because it connects us with the Lord. When it comes to our prayer, I think right away of the rosary, that prayer that the Lord gives us that takes about 1% of the day to pray. What would it look like if you aren't daily praying your rosary? Simply to give 15 minutes, 1% of the day to the Lord in contemplative prayer. Or again, here at the parish, we have adoration. Come to adoration, especially on Sundays when we have it after the uh, 1.30 Mass. Or, or even better yet, we have our little black books, those books which have five, six minutes of daily prayer. You can join us on this uh, very channel, on our YouTube channel, for Liturgy of the Hours, even if you can't make it in person, to join the friars as you are able to join with them in chanting the prayers which sanctify all of time. Here's my suggestion, that this Lent, these next 40 days, you try some new way of prayer that you haven't yet prayed. Even if it's just a prayer that you've always wanted to learn or know, like the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. 
Pray it for 40 days. Learn it. After 40 days, I guarantee you, if you say it consistently, you'll have it memorized by the end of Lent come Easter time. And finally, the final way to Lent well is to give of yourself. Here in the parish, uh, we often use this time of Lent to kick off our annual appeal for the diocese, recognizing that we've been given many gifts, a special financial uh, capability here at the parish, and to reach out to those aspects of our church which are in need, especially our Catholic school system, in order to help subsidize and help families that can't afford Catholic education to give them the financial wherewithal to do that, helping our prisons and our uh, hospital ministries in being able to provide a Catholic formation in those areas that are at the margins. Uh, and then finally, for all the formation for deacons and other clergy support for the diocese uh, that enrich our lives. So if you have yet to, and we, as we kick it off, are interested in giving in this way, you can certainly uh, use the, um, all of our usual ways uh, to donate to the Archbishop's appeal. And even more than that, though, to ask yourself, what is the Lord calling me to give? It could be giving time to someone. It could be giving a sense of your talents and some uh, aspect of what the Lord has given you to the parish or to an else, someone else in your life. We are called in these next 40 days to open our hearts and our minds to a kind of springtime of our soul, to Lent, to Lent well, to, in, to engage in Lenten. <laughs> May the ways in which we fast, pray, and give truly allow the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and lives that we might be renewed come Easter time. Amen. Amen.